Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to continue with our print and cut mini series. We're actually going to make some printable stickers today. But I'm going to show you how to use the pattern fill to really enhance your print and cut images. I love the pattern fill. I've used it in tutorials before and I will link to those in the description below. So the first thing we want to do is go to images and you can see I've already typed in Cricut. We're just going to use a QT today. So I'm going to go with the happy QT. So we're going to click on that and insert image. So if we go over to our layers panel, you'll see that everything is currently set to cut. If we click on the color to change the color, we can only use a color. You'll see there's no pattern there. If we change it to a print, you'll then see it comes up with patterns. Now you'll notice it's a print, not a print and cut. This comes later. When we actually put our pattern onto our image, it automatically changes it to a print and cut. But you will need to change from a cut to a print to be able to access the patterns. So if we click on our patterns, you'll see you first of all have your uploaded patterns. Then there are lots and lots of paid patterns. And there are lots and lots of access patterns as well. So there's plenty of choice in there. Now to get your patterns, if you go to somewhere like Design Bundles and you go to Graphics, there are lots of different graphics you can search. Textures, patterns, illustrations, decorations, backgrounds. And they have lots and lots of bundles. There are some really beautiful patterns in here that you can use in your pattern fill. So we're just going to use the glitter textures today. So all you need to do is click on that and then you can just add it to your cart and download it. Once it's downloaded onto your computer, we're then able to upload it into Design Space. So if we go to upload, now normally we would go to upload image, today we're going to use upload pattern. So we're just going to click on that, we're going to go to browse, you want to find the file you want and then you can click on the image. So we're just going to click on this dark green glitter and open. You can change your pattern name. And you can add tags and styles so that you can easily find it, especially if you're uploading lots of patterns. Once you're happy, you can then save. Once it's uploaded, it will automatically go back to your upload screen. Now you won't be able to see it because this is for uploaded images and we haven't uploaded an image, we've uploaded a pattern. So we're just going to click on upload again and that will then take us back to our canvas. If we then click on patterns, you'll then see your recently uploaded pattern in your pattern. So for our tongue, we're going to go for the red glitter. So we're just going to click on that. And you'll see it's got a nice glitter to it, but you'll also see that it's automatically changed it from a print to a print and cut. So let's do the eyes. So we're going to first of all change them from a cut to a print. We're then going to go to patterns and we're going to click on the green glitter. Again, you can see that our pattern fill has then taken over our dark green bits and it's also automatically changed it from a print to a print and cut. So next I want to do the black part. So I'm just going to click on the cut and I'm going to change it to a print. I'm going to go to patterns and I've got some black glitter here. So I'm just going to click on that. So you can see that that has now been added. 
And I also want to add it to the black part of the eyes here. Uh, it's looking a bit cosmic-y at the moment. It's definitely worth having a play with. Uh, you may find that you need to change things, you may need to adapt things slightly, but this is why I love working with the pattern fill. It really allows you to have a really, really good play. So I've chosen this access pattern for the body and I'm just, I don't know, I'm not feeling the arms. So I'm just going to keep scrolling down until I find something that takes my fancy. And as I said, it's just about playing. Um, just have a good play with it and you can really kind of experiment with what you're doing. So I've now chosen this one for the arms and I just want to see what this one looks like on the body. You could spend hours doing this, you really, really could. Actually, I like that. That looks a lot better. So we're going to keep it like that, otherwise we'll be here all day. Now, if I go to the mat with it like... Oh, it just needs to change the eyes to a print and that's okay we're going to keep them white but in a second we're going to change it to a print and cut anyway so as I say if you leave it as it is it's going to want to cut everything on separate mats and we don't want that so all we're going to do is we're going to come in we're going to highlight all and then we're going to go to flatten so what the flatten does is it turns it all into one flat image. Now it's still going to cut all the way around here because we haven't flattened it onto a shape. If I wanted to maybe put a circle behind here with some text, then I would flatten everything. It would print out my QT and my text, but it would only cut out my circle. But because I have just flattened this on its own, it's still going to come in and cut all around the shape, which is exactly what I want. So you can see that that is now flattened, so everything is one. So it's only going to cut out the outline for me. Now, as we've discussed, the biggest you can do for print and cut in Design Space is 9.25 inches by 6.75 inches. So we're just going to come in and we're going to do it at its max. So 9.25. And I, I want to keep it in proportion, so that's fine on the width. So we're then going to go to make it. You can see it then comes up as a print and cut. So we can go to continue. Now I am using my maker today. But if you were using your explore or your air 2. Then all you're going to do is exactly what we've done. It's just when it comes to your cut setting, you're going to move your dial around to custom setting so that you can then find the printable sticker paper setting. So the first thing we're going to do is send to printer. Now I'm going to send mine to my Canon. Now it is an inkjet, I love using my inkjet, I do believe that you can get sticker paper for laser printers as well. Now in the previous video, which I will link below, I talked about the bleed and about how when we flatten to a shape, whether you have your bleed on or off doesn't make any difference. However, we have not flattened to a shape, we have just flattened our image. So you do need to choose whether you're going to have the bleed on or off. Now I like to have my bleed off, but if you want to keep yours on, that's absolutely fine. It will look slightly fuzzy when it prints out. This is just a buffer for your machine that will be cut away. Once you've got your settings, you can then go to print. So I've got the Cricut printable sticker paper here. So it's got a plain white side and a gridded side. You want to make sure that you place it in your printer so that you are printing on the plain white side. 
Now what I like to do before I put my sticker paper in my printer is I actually like to go over it with my fabric brayer. Now I do this with any sticker paper, whether it be Cricut, it be a pack I've got from eBay or from the shops. The reason for this is that sometimes along the edges it can be slightly loose and if it catches in your printer, which I have had happen, you end up with a great big mess and you really, really do not want that. So it's just worth going in with your fabric brayer or even your scraper and just making sure that it is nice and adhered to the backing paper. So you can see that that has now printed out. You want to leave this to dry for about 10 minutes just to make sure that your ink is nice and dried. Once it's dry, we want to put it on a green mat and again, we're going to go in with our fabric brayer just to make sure that it's nice and adhered. Now I try not to use a scraper when I'm working with printables. Uh, if I do, I'm going to scrape around the image very gently or I'm going to use a scraper with some felt on it. Just to make sure I don't take away any of my registration marks and I don't take away any of my picture. But if you leave it to dry, it should be fine. We're going to come down to paper. Now I am using the Cricut sticker paper today, but you can use any brand of sticker paper. I'm going to use the sticker paper setting and actually with most brands and even unbranded sticker paper, I still use the sticker paper setting. Now if you are using an air, all you need to do to get this setting is to turn your dial to custom settings and you'll then be able to choose sticker paper exactly the same way that I have. And we can also take away any middle bits. And we've then got a really lovely pattern filled sticker. So when I'm working with a large sticker such as this one, if we just peel this, we're gonna end up with these kind of antenna flapping around a bit. So I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to peel back the sticker paper just to about halfway and I'm just going to snip away the backing. So the back bottom half of our sticker is now exposed. So I'm going to work out where I want it to sit. I'm going to put it on my pegboard today. So I'm just going to come in and stick the bottom half down. And then I'm just going to start peeling away the top. I'm going to do one antenna at a time and just let it sit where it wants to sit. And then we've got ourselves a really cute sticker. I'm then just going to go in with my fabric brayer just to make sure it's nice and secured on there. 